decided to leave God. And what he's been through is a testimony for him, for us, and for all of us in this room to learn from. And in verse 19, this was the heart of Josh. When he had spent everything, he said, I am no longer worthy to be called your sons. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said, Father, I've sinned against heaven. I've sinned against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said, quick, bring the best robe, put it on him. Put a ring on his fingers, sandals on his feet, bring the fat and calf and kill it. It's time to celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is now found. So they began to celebrate. And what I'm excited for is Josh is a man who has went into the world and spent everything he had in his worldly wealth. He decided, I'm going to go and do all the sin that I've never done. And by the end of it, he says, this has left me with nothing. And it brought me back to remember this son in Luke 15, who says, you know, I've, I've tried everything. I just want to go back to the father. And this son comes and says, I'm just going to tell God I'm sorry and I'm no longer worthy. And God doesn't even let him finish his apology. He just says, stop it. Bring the best robe. Bring the fattened calf. It's time to set. This is contradictory to all of what we do in our nature. In the world, what we do is very performance oriented. And we say, no, you know, you need to, you need to make up for what you did. And we hold, we've seen people hold grudges. And I just implore you as God's family that we embrace a lost son that's come back. He's shown to be no longer worthy, but excited that God has made him worthy because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. I give you guys, George. So I'm going to share briefly about Josh. Um, we've been doing the studies together and it's been super an honor and just really a blessing. But um, just a quick scripture is John 13. Uh, most of us are familiar with it. It's 34 and 35. And it says, um, it reads like this. A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And the reason why I read this, because this is something, you know, as you know, whenever we study the Bible, people, you know, you, we learn a lot too. And really studying the Bible with Josh, it really just shows me like how much we really got to not take for granted the love that we have for one another. Amen. I mean, coming here to Josh, he was you know, apologizing to a lot of people. And he would always tell me, I can't believe it. And I'm like, what do you mean you can't believe it? I can't believe it was that easy. I thought it was going to be a big scene. I thought they were going to be so mad at me. I thought everything was going to be so bad. And every time, every time he came around, he's like, I can't believe it. Like, he just was blown away by how much the kingdom loved him. And he was blown away by how much really God loved him. And reading the scripture really reminds you of you coming in. It really reminds me and all of us to really just be grateful to understand like, wow, this is the kingdom. God does love us. And there's no other love like this. I'm really grateful for you, Josh, to come back and really just to see this love. And I know you're going to love God's family like this. So I love you a lot. And I give you guys Josh. Amen. So... My name is Joshua. I was baptized at 15 years old. Uh, I was baptized, Gordo baptized me. Um, and it was, it, it was hard, um, definitely as a teen disciple. Um, and then I got to campus and I fell away about eight months ago. Um, eight months ago. And the first, oh, backstory there was a sister in the church and I ended up falling away with her um, we ended up dating the world um, and you know how that goes um, it didn't end up working out um, and it's hard it's definitely hard but as soon as we broke up I you feel that void you feel that void in your heart you feel like wow I'm by myself because when I left 
I had that person to rely on, you know? I had that person, and when I was in the church, I had the church to rely on. Um, you get, get D times, you get family times, so, and when I didn't have those things, that's, that was in a span of about two, three weeks. Um, and I could say those three weeks were probably like the darkest times of my life. I grew up as a kingdom kid, so, um, for, the, for the people that don't know that, I grew up in this church. Uh, I was pretty much born into it, you know? Um, so I didn't, get really, I didn't really get the chance to experience a lot of what the world has, you know? I never got with any girls. I never drank. I never smoked. I never, I literally, I was a potato. I didn't do anything. I was all around church. Um, and for those three weeks, I thought to myself, wow, I feel like this emptiness inside me. Um, so I made the decision. I'm gonna fill it with literally everything possible I can. I did everything possible to be able to fill that void. Literally everything I said I was never going to do. Drugs, drinking, everything. And it's crazy how the scriptures really come to life, you know? Um, and a lot of times we ignore them. We ignore them like uh, a relationship without God is gonna go downhill eventually. Um, how things of the world are just temporary, you know? Um, and I want to apologize to God, you know, for me turning my back on him, you know, um, for me knowing where I was at and still choosing to leave. Um, and I want to apologize to all of you guys, um, because there are a lot of people that I was close to in this room that I probably did hurt. And I'm probably going to still be able to have those conversations with you guys because, you know, we are a family and we do get our feelings hurt, you know. Um, and it's been hard with uh, everything, but I remember the first Sunday, all these thoughts coming back to my head, like, man, I, I really don't want to be here, you know? And then I was able just to like talk to George and just get my heart right, and exactly, I shouldn't be here, you know? I don't deserve to be here, you know? Because it's such a, it's such a great family environment to be, and I took it for granted, you know? And so yeah, I wanted to apologize to you guys all personally, and I know I'm gonna have those conversations with maybe some individuals that I may be hurt, and I just want you guys to know that me personally, I am sorry, you know? Um, but there was a situation with, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but my parents used to be part of this church. Um, there was a situation that happened, and my parents pretty much, I'm 20, so they gave me, uh, a choice, you know. Um, you can either come with us, they have their own church, or you can, honestly, you can go wherever you want, you know. But all they cared about was that I had a relationship with God, you know. And I knew, I knew I could go back to either their church and be part of that, or I could go to a, some regular Christian church, you know, where they're probably not going to call me higher, where they're probably not going to be calling out me out on my sin, where, you know, the things that we get here in the kingdom. Um, so I made a decision. I made a decision that I needed to come back here. Um, because this is the kingdom of God, you know? And it's crazy because we get, I know the church gets persecuted a lot. Um, but only because people know, you know? People know that, wow, this is, this is the real deal. That's why, that's why we're going to persecute this church, you know? But... Coming back, guys, I definitely don't want to be the same Josh that people knew. Um, I definitely want to be a lot more different. I definitely don't want to be that brother that, that people are like, oh, I don't want to disciple that person because he's just going to rebuttal with something else, you know? Um, I want to come back with like a humility that is just incredible. And again, I don't want to talk the talk. I want to be able to prove it in my actions. Um, but guys, I love you, and I'm glad to be back. Let's stand on up and embrace Josh back into the family with We Love You With The Love.